Welcome back guys. So today is the day, the day we've all been waiting for. I get to retire the Neo Geo AES. My games, set them aside. Because we got this bad boy, the Neo Geo Mini. Pretty sweet stuff. So we've covered this quite a bit from the rumors, the leaked lists, all that crazy stuff. And we finally got one in today. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this, peep it out, and see what to do. So let's do it. So here we go. The box, front of the box, Neo Geo Mini Pro Gear Spec Advanced Entertainment System. SNK 40th anniversary, just in time. Side of the box, 40 Neo Geo games included. Check it out, what? Same thing pretty much on the opposite side there. Back of the box does show the included games. Obviously, with this being the Asian Japanese release, uh, you know, there's not gonna be much English text on the box, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and open this beast up. Been really looking forward to this. Super excited to get it. Cool, we got a manual. The actual unit and a little box of goodies. So yes, I've been excited to get this, but there are some things I'm not so happy with and some things that are pretty cool. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about that and look at that today. So here's the actual unit itself. Pretty sweet stuff. You can see that there is no marquee and the bottom, um, you know, the base where the controls are, there's no image or decal like it shows on the box. There's a reason for that and we'll show that in a moment. Looks like we got two speaker like type grills on the side there. A little power LED light at our analog, our A, B, C, D. Um, they are imprinted on the white plastic for start, select, A, B, C, D. The buttons are imprinted on there to say like, okay, this is A, this is B, C, and D. You could probably not see that on camera. Um, it's a very light kind of like impression on there, but it is on there. If you put the decal over it, it covers that up. Um, but moving forward, we do have USB type C ports for both player one and uh, that's player two and player one controllers. On the back of the unit, we have our power button. Really cool that that's marked with the uh, Neo Geo logo. We have HDMI, that is like a, what is it, an HDMI mini, so that's kind of, you know, an odd thing, but that's what we get. Headphone jack and USB Type-C for the power. So we need to see what's in this included box. The instruction manual, we're not gonna really look at it, but it is in uh, English, Japanese, and Chinese. Once you skip to page 20, it's all in English. Pretty much just explains how you can use it in single player, two player mode, um, how to hook it up to your TV so on and so forth, right? Um, so in this little box, we do get a couple things that we need, but not everything. So we get our USB Type-C cable with, uh, hopefully you can see that nice little Neo Geo logo on there, pretty cool. USB-C uh, Neo Geo branded. We need this for our power. So it does have a little sticker, please use USB compatible five volt output AC adapter. Okay. And then the other little extras, uh, wouldn't really say extras. Well, I guess they're kind of extras, but whatever, cause you don't have to use these. You will get a couple marquees, a little bonus like Neo Geo and SNK sticker. We get two marquees that you can see right here. So you get the pick. Uh, they do sell these separately in little random packs of four. From what I have been seeing, uh, you know, from reviews and whatnot on Amazon Japan, it doesn't seem as random as you would hope. Some people are getting the same exact ones over and over again. And they're actually getting this one with their random packs. Kind of sucks that you're buying random packs and you're getting one that's included with the system. Um, you know, pretty nice feel to them. They got like that, that plasticky rubber feel to them. I don't know if they're like restickable. Uh, I did read a kind of a uh, review that was translated from Japanese that kind of made it seem like they weren't. 
uh, that whatever one you put on there, you couldn't get it off, but I'm sure there are ways to get it off. Uh, this one for the actual control panel is textured, feels really nice. Um, you could line it up. I've tried uh, seeing if this will stick and re-stick, and it does. You could peel it back off. So this seems a little easier. These, I don't know. People are saying they just stick to it. I haven't tried it. Um, I don't know which one I'm going to put on there. I don't, I don't even think I'm going to put these on because I've got some other uh, things I want to do with this. But those are what you get. Now the actual unit, like I said, little power button. We're pressing the power. It's not coming on, right? Well, there's a reason for that. This unit, it does have a nice little, you know, heaviness to it. It's not too heavy, not too light. It actually feels really nice, not cheaply made, uh, to me anyway. The screen looks good without it being on. The bezel, everything looks really nice to me. Uh, the buttons feel okay, but I can tell that they, they have like a rubber membrane under them. There's no micro switches there. Uh, you know, I haven't taken it apart, but I kind of get that impression and it's just the little membranes with the, the contact points on the board. That's just the way it feels. Uh, the stick, unfortunately, doesn't have any kind of clickiness to it. There's no micro switches in there. It feels like an analog stick. Very smooth, and I have some uh, thoughts about that. We'll talk about that once we do some gameplay. Um, but there is no internal battery in this thing, so that kind of defeats the purpose of it being a portable unit. Not really so much portable anymore, right? So that's one of the cons. But you do get the USB power cable, no brick or anything. Um, you know, a lot of these companies don't like providing anything like that. So what we would do, plug it in to the back there and to our power, take the other end and either put it into a brick or something else that could power it or, you know, a little external power source such as these Anker uh, power supplies, these little power banks, whatever the heck you want to call them. I really like these. I use it for my Nintendo Switch. I actually have three of these. Um, these work great, so I would definitely recommend them. Um, but we go ahead and power that on. Take a look. Little LED light pops on. Screen comes on. And I don't know how well that audio comes through, but... It sounds really decent to me. Um, you can change the volume and whatnot by pressing start and select, getting into that menu. Um, you'll get brightness and, and volume that you can mess around with. The unit ships in Japanese, everything's in Japanese, but you can go into the settings and change the language to English. So that'll give you all your menus in English, your in-game, uh, you know, the overlay menu to do like save states and whatnot in English. The you know game select all the the titles will be in English, but in game they're in Japanese. But with Neo Geo, pretty much every Neo Geo game the options are all in English, so it's not hard to figure out. There's only a couple games that I can think of that the menus aren't in English; they're in Japanese. But for the most part, it's pretty simple to figure out. Uh, so there's that. Pretty sweet. And you do have a list of 40 games here, and we'll put this up, uh, we'll plug this to the TV in the capture card so you can see this a little better. I did want to highlight the unit a little bit just so you can see how she looks. Uh, you know, so we're going to go ahead and plug this in, take a look at the actual, you know, menu, the games and whatnot, and see how things play. Give you my impressions on how this controller feels, and my overall thoughts on the unit. So let's plug it up and do it. Okay guys, so here we go. Quick little overview of some things here. If you do import this from Japan, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the settings screen here, which is top in the middle. Everything will be in Japanese, so just take note. First option will be language. Like I said, it'll be shown in Japanese. So first one is language, and you can select English in there. A few other options, sort. You can sort the games by the default way they have it or by previously played. And then you do have some screen options. You can go four by three or 16 by nine. And then uh, these two options here, I'm not 100% what they're called, but I would imagine stretch. And then this one, you do have kind of like a little black bezel around, very thin black bezel. Uh, depending upon your TV, having it stretched, this option may cut off uh, part of the bottom and top of the screen. So 
that's for either 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 that is what I have noticed so I just leave it like this I think it's the optimal way to play works for me image quality optimization you can have it off or on pretty much it's just a smoothing effect uh, so immediately you should notice this takes heavy inspiration from the NES Classic, Super Nintendo Classic with the way the user interface is. I think it's pretty neat. It does work. The only other two options up here are help and copyright. You just get like, hey, it's illegal to copy this stuff. Uh, the help is just going to be some QR codes to go to their Facebook or Twitter for SNK. Nothing major. So beyond that, um, you can get to the settings in game or even here just by pressing select and start instead of going to that option up there uh, The games 40 games. We're not going to go over the differences between the US and Japanese release If you want a more in-depth look at that I have done a video on it previously link will be in the description for my Neo Geo mini videos But you do get a nice selection on the Japanese version a heavy uh, you know influence of uh, King of Fighters games here and a lot of people did tell me with this different way that the controller, uh, the buttons are aligned, works great for the King of Fighters. I'm not a big King of Fighters person, but I have been testing this out quite a bit before I recorded this. And I do see this button layout actually works very well for the King of Fighters, uh, with uh, the top two buttons being your punch and the bottom two being kick. Now, if you use the actual the unit, the mini uh, you know arcade cabinet here as a controller which is what I am doing here because I was not lucky enough to get an actual controller the way the button layout is it actually works decently well because you're kind of holding it from the side uh, if you hold it from the front it's gonna be a lot more difficult to press the buttons it gets a little more cramped so I can definitely see it being a plus holding it that way and the way the buttons are laid out it will take some time getting used to in some games uh, but like for the King of Fighters, it works great. Samurai Showdown, I've, I've uh, been able to adapt fairly well to it. So let me just go ahead and jump into a game and kind of give you some highlights of how things look. Every game loads up like this, depending upon the game. That little swirly screen we just got may take a little longer, may take a little shorter. Just seems like the bigger the game, the longer it takes to load up. Um, so go ahead and get into a game. The, the visuals look fine. Uh, to me, you know, if you're emulating on a retro pie or, or something else, they look a little more crisp than this. Uh, for me, playing on the original AES using like the HD RetroVision cables, it, it really looks a lot better than this, but it, it, it looks fine. I mean, I'm not really knocking it. From the options I have, I have noticed it does look better than the way this displays on my TV. There is kind of a little bit of a blurriness to it, a little, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it you know things kind of blur a little bit. Whereas when I use my original AES or I play on RetroPie, I don't get that. So go ahead and jump into the game here. And everything plays well and sounds great. I haven't really noticed any sound issues. Uh, it does play in you know uh, stereo, so you do get a left and right audio channel. So that is something to to kind of note. So let's go ahead and get into this fight and then show you what the visual optimization looks like. Oh. Yeah, really, you know, the one thing I definitely would enjoy this a lot more if I had the, the controller for it instead of using the actual unit. It is a little more harder to play and it can get a, you know, a little, uh, a little tiring holding the unit as a controller this way. Um, so let's go ahead and turn that optimization on real quick and as you can see it's kind of a it's it's just kind of a smoothing you get a little bit of a smoothing action going there some people may dig that some people may not I'm kind of indifferent it doesn't really bother me but typically I like the way the game looks uh, without any kind of options on so just wanted to point that out but it's definitely kind of cool using the included controller on the uh, you know not included controller but the analog stick which yes I'm gonna call it an analog stick it, it seems like you gotta get used to it you know rolling it because there's no micro switches so you're not getting that clickiness and if you barely press the analog the stick to the left or right without going all the way to the you know to the limit of the controller it will move just fine so to me that kind of poses a problem with uh, movements for you know inputs for for certain moves that could be an issue just will take some time getting used to 
So, not too bad. Uh, the games, I do want to point out, you know, they are the Japanese versions on this, and they are playing uh, in the AES mode. They're not playing in MVS. Nothing has seemed to be censored. They are the Japanese versions. You do get blood and whatnot. I haven't seen any issues with that. Everything's in blood. They are the Japanese versions. Uh, nothing seems to be censored as far as I can tell. Everything plays decently well. Uh, the big thing is, is do I think it's worth it? This device cost me $116 shipped from Japan. Uh, and, you know, all rumors are leading to say that the U.S. version will be 100 bucks as well, around the same price. But with the system not coming with anything that you need to plug it into your TV, no mini HDMI, no controller, no power brick, uh, I could see some people being put off by that for a $100 price point. I would expect, you know, to get what I need to use this on my TV and not just this little handheld mode which you still can't use it without, you know, any kind of external power supply. Uh, so it, it's kind of up in the air for me. Would I buy this again? Uh, probably not. Reason being is I have other options to play Neo Geo, and I see the, uh, the handheld mode with the little screen being more of a gimmick and never really using it that way unless I'm sitting in my car waiting around, uh, you know, bored sitting on the toilet or something I, I don't know you know I'm just being honest here I really don't see wanting to use this in handheld mode being tethered to a external power source kind of a put off to me so for me it's a it's a it's kind of a pass I still kind of dig it it seems like a neat little item you know if somebody wants to put it on their shelf and just stare at it but if it came with the controllers and it was reasonably priced came with everything you need I would definitely give this a, a you know, a, an A. Not an A+, plus, maybe a B, you know, B+, plus maybe. Um, but with it not coming with anything I need to actually use it the way I want to use it, it's a little disappointing at a $100 price point. So just wanted to give you guys my quick impressions on that. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to know or see, I have a few other videos planned to highlight some things with this. Let me know in the description, in the, the comments down below. Um, this unit I am actually not going to keep. I am going to be giving it away as a patron uh, giveaway prize. So, hey, if you're interested in becoming a patron, as little as a dollar a month helps out my channel greatly. And you get entered into a lot of awesome giveaways every month. We will be giving this unit away this month to one lucky patron. Every dollar you put in gets you entered into the giveaways. We'll have a few other items as well to give away, but just wanted to mention that quickly. We'll have a, a more official announcement in a week or so on that. But leave your comments down below. Let me know. What do you think? Are you going to grab one of these? Are you going to pass? Smash that like button if you could. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter. Do all that cool stuff. And with that said, guys, I will catch you all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom.